Hello and welcome. My name is Chris, and today I want to talk about my live streaming slash podcasting slash everything in between setup, mostly focused though on live streaming and live podcasting. So let's jump right into it and start with a couple of the gadgets that are around me right here. First up, the camera that I'm using for the live streams is the Canon EOS R. That is an amazing camera, probably completely overkill, but I also use it for all kinds of other video work as well as my YouTube video productions. So it's a great camera and I use the 24 to 105 f4. That is a very versatile lens and it's kind of a cheap -er RF lens. And I also use the RF 35 millimeter, which is a macro and a 1.8 and it's tiny and it's great for those in between things where you don't want to lug around a heavy lens. Personally, still saving up for the 15 to 35 millimeter and also the 70 to 200, but those are kind of like far away in the distance. You will not see the camera in this setup today because of course I am holding it right in my hand, so just know that. Generally speaking, on my desk I have two places for the camera. I, for one, use a tripod, which you can see right here. So I have a tripod that's standing just on the desk and that is something that I use sometimes for that angle and I can also of course move around the tripod, use it in different spaces and so on. However, I also have another tripod mount right there. Look around at that. And as you can see, this tripod mount is basically mounted to this Visa mount right here and then on an extension tube and then it is just right there so that I can use it as this angle and it's kind of connected to this laptop stand right there. Having these different angles available is super helpful because not everything looks the same. For quite a while I was just using one tripod behind my computer and it was always the same angle and I kind of like the simplicity of always having the same setup where you don't really have to change much. But I like to have the variation ability in this space here because I have so much room around me I can do all kinds of different things. So that's really really helpful. For live streaming of course the camera in one place is probably what you want to use. And that's how I built this whole desk with the Visa mount and that tube because that's something that I found really, really cool. However, there is one problem that I have with it and that is that having a standing desk that I have right here, the desk wobbles a bit whenever I move. So having the camera mounted to the desk also has the problem that it transports the same wobble to the camera and I have to use stabilization, which I wouldn't have to use if the camera would be standing on the ground and that would be solid. So that's something to know if you are trying to live stream and you put your camera onto your desk and you connect those two together, then you will have that also. Now we have the camera and it's standing somewhere. However, how does the signal get to the computer? And that actually happens with an HDMI cord. And you can see that HDMI cord right here, right next to the power adapter, which is a dummy battery which is used for the EOS R to not power off. I have a specific video about this, so you can check that out if you want to learn more about continuously driving the EOS R. With the HDMI cord, from back there, it actually travels behind the computer all the way over to my monitor right there, where then I have a picture or the image that I see that the camera sees, so I can check that. And the monitor also can be used to record the camera in progress, and not just that, it also applies a LUT that then gets passed on to the other devices. So from this monitor, the signal actually gets out to HDMI again, and from there, it travels to the computer, where it comes out of here, traveling through there and into the cam link. Now there is a way cheaper alternative, I have talked about that, but since I have the cam link lying around, I might as well use it. If I wouldn't have the cam link lying around, I would probably just use this capture card, which is a super cheap alternative, around $15 is this one, or at least I got it for that price. It's kind of available on all kinds of prices, so check your Amazon for that. However, that capture card takes up to 1080p, the cam link can support 4K, however, with the Canon EOS R, 4K would be cropped in, so I don't ever use that because that would mean that I would also have to live with the crop and not as a wide angle lens as I am using right now. 
Now we have the HDMI cord connected to the computer. With that, I am going through the Atomos Ninja V, which is my monitor as well as recorder. You don't really need that. However, it is nice to have to apply a lot and also monitor what you're doing and also record in full quality with ProRes. This is obviously not necessary. You can also just straight away connect your camera to your computer with HDMI. That way you would have one less device to worry about and you can also apply a lot just inside OBS. Now we talked about the camera, its mounting places, and also how the video signal gets to the computer. However, there's also sound, which is very important. Mainly what I use for that is this microphone right here, which is a Shure Beta 57A. This is specifically for my podcasting as well as live streaming, if I also want the camera to pick up the microphone because I want to have this close to my mouth. However, for the audio quality, this is really nice. I also sometimes use the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I have right now mounted on the camera to show you around here, but I can actually put this here because I chose to put a little bit of an adapter right here to have a cold shoe and also here a cold shoe adapter. So I can just place this microphone here, but I can also place the Rode VideoMic NTG there and I have a extension cable right here, which just takes this signal from the Rode VideoMic NTG puts it into the camera and that way I can also use that for live streaming. And with this arm, the microphone stays flexible and I can move it around, keep it out of frame, and that's really cool. With this specific microphone, however, the Shure Beta 57A, which I talked about on this channel as well, and also the fakes that are about this, so you make sure that you get the real one, um, I then connect that to the Zoom H5 right here which is a audio recorder, however, with the USB cord, which I have connected to my monitor, which then gets connected to the computer. This also becomes a audio capture device, and I can use that to actually capture a XLR device or two of them, and just straight away put them through to the computer. And then inside OBS, I can use this microphone as a audio source, which makes the audio really, really nice and crisp and also deep because of the characteristics of this microphone. I love this setup for podcasts, but it's also great for live streaming. Again, as long as you don't mind the microphone being in the shot because it works best when you have it close to your mouth. A couple more things I have around here is that I have a couple of lights right there. However, those are kind of old school. They are daylight kind of lights, uh, but I would now get the LED versions of those things because those LED lights now got so much cheaper throughout the years. So nowadays, probably wouldn't invest in those things. And at some point, I will probably even replace them with something different. However, this type of setup wouldn't really work without a computer. So right here on this mounting position with this nice Visa laptop stand, I actually have a MacBook Pro. This is a 2017 model, and that is actually hooked up to this LG 34 inch 4K capable or ultra wide 4K, it's not really 4K, but ultra wide 4K kind of thing, uh, monitor. And this is actually amazing because this way I can actually set it up so that the live stream only sees the middle of the screen while I also have certain panels on the left and right hand side open. And that gives me the option to have the chat open while it's not on the screen with the parts that are also being live streamed. The way that everything is connected is kind of simple and that it's not. The audio goes from the Shure to the Zoom H5 from there via USB into the monitor. From the monitor, there's a USB-C cord that goes to the computer. The computer then handles all that stuff in OBS. With the video, it's the same thing. The camera is plugged into an outlet with the battery adapter. Nice thing there, the EOS R5 apparently does not need that anymore because it can be power delivered via USB-C while it's actually being in use. So that's going to be a good upgrade. And then from there, it's a HDMI cord that goes to the capture card or the monitor, and then from there to the capture card. And then it gets captured by the computer, which also puts it into OBS. Inside OBS, you activate your sources, you put your effects, you pull everything together, and then you have your finished scene, which you can start live streaming. This whole setup for me is placed on a standing desk from FlexiSpot. And that actually makes me really get up more, be more in movement. So that's really, really powerful. I also built a little bit of a little box right here, which has drawers so I can store more things there. And overall, it's just super, super practical, super cool. 
In this room, I also have a couple carpets around, which probably helps to get rid of a little bit of the echo. I have a lot of clear wall at the moment, so I'm thinking about building some kind of soundproofing. And also the ceiling is still very hard, so to say. So that's probably also the reason why there is still echo here. But this is something that I have to work with over the next couple of weeks. It's kind of expensive to build those things, so that's one part. And it's also something that takes time. So just having moved in here, I just needed to start making more content. So I am doing that and I'm not letting myself get bogged down by not having the perfect audio in this here right now. But this is basically my live streaming setup in terms of its hardware. Now, this is pretty much all the things I use in terms of hardware for live streaming. And I'm not even a big live streamer. So why do I have all this? Basically, it's because I have the gear in certain parts and I wanted to try certain things. Now, if you want to get started, I have a couple of videos on this topic for you on my channel about live streaming, even how you can use your iPhone as a webcam on your computer or how you can even live stream just using your iPhone and a little bit of a better audio with different types of microphones. So check those videos out for more about that. But for now, I hope this video was informative for you to learn a little more about the setup that I'm using right here. If you want to learn more about how I do things here and what other stuff I use in my daily work, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will make sure to answer those questions there or make a video about it. If you find this interesting, please give it a like so that other people can find this type of video as well and you let me know what you like about my videos and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and on other topics. All that said, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Ciao, ciao.